Kyle Shanahan is on a streak. Every time he talks, he says something kind of slanderous about his own player, and it goes viral. Today, it was Brandon Ayuk. He said he's inconsistent. In the past, it was Trey Lance said he had reverted back to some old habits. Um, I mean, he didn't have to say much about Trey Sermon. He just made him inactive. <laughs> uh, what do you think about Kyle Shanahan's treatment of his first round pick this year that he traded up for, his third round pick this year that he traded up for, and his first round pick last year that he traded up for? So let's go one, Lance one Sermon and Ayuk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's go with Lance first. Again, I, I didn't have a problem with how he used him in the preseason. He was trying to, from what I understand, look at his weaknesses, get him to play through those so that he would be better. So the way that I see it is he had three options on Sunday that were the right options. He could have played Garoppolo all the way through. He is mm -hmm. the starting quarterback. He could have played Lance all the way through and said that he was the starting quarterback or... Mm -hmm. He could have done a mix, but when he brought in Lance, he could have worked on his weakness, which is playing from the pocket and help develop him more. But he chose option D, which is neither of those. He's going to play Lance and he's going to completely contradict everything he said because Lance threw from inside the 10, a touchdown, which mm -hmm. if you don't trust a quarterback from the pocket, you don't let him make that throw. Mm -hmm. And then the other three plays that Lance was in, he ran the ball. So let me know where he's helping him develop from the pocket because I'm not seeing it. I think it's a total misuse. Now, if he's setting things up for later in the season, maybe we'll see all of this later on and say, hey, it was much to do about nothing. But if this is the plan, this is not a good plan. Look, I, I'm not going to listen to anything Kyle Shanahan says because he's constantly contradicting himself. And I almost feel like he's purposely messing with us. Right. All I'm going to yeah. do is judge him on his actions. And all I see now is a coach who's burying Trey Lance behind Jimmy Garoppolo, who they wanted to replace. So his actions say that he's not exactly thrilled about Trey. And then he made Trey Sermon inactive week one. Where did that come from? I mean, what the hell was that? So the action there is you're not happy with the third round pick you traded up for. And then Ayuk, you, you, it's not that they didn't start him. He split time with Trent Sherfield. It's that they made him run 26 routes and didn't throw him the ball once. He had right. to be like basically clearing out. It seemed pretty freaking clear that they were trying to take him down a peg, send him a message, who knows what. But again, it's like, so now you're displeased with him too because of what? Because you like, I mean, Trent Sherfield's feels a good story, but dude, you got to make this work with Brandon Ayuk. And uh, this kind of tough love style of yours, does that work? I don't know. It didn't work for Dante Pettis or CJ Beathard or um, Ruben Foster or any of these other guys that they traded up for and didn't end up like Joe Williams. Right. It. It seemed to have worked for Debo. Like Debo's looking really good right now, right? And he definitely showed him some tough love last year. But I don't know. I just, I just feel like there's there's a, such an ego thing with him. And and you know, I wanted to give him credit after that game because he talked about how he thought he was thinking about pulling the starters. He didn't quite do it. Then Verrett gets injured, and he's like, "Oh man, I don't want anybody else to get injured." So that became the focus and they lost they lost a little bit of leeway in that game. And that's how it got close. Right. That's how he explained it, which I thought was him being vulnerable. I'm like, all right, well, listen, he's turning a corner here a little bit. His ego is not necessarily getting in the way. He can say when he's wrong for once. That's not something we've heard from him. But then everything since then has just been ego driven, ego driven, ego driven. So I don't know. I just like, don't buy what he's saying. about. Let's just focus on Ayuk. Yeah. He comes out today and says. He's inconsistent. Mm -hmm. What do you mean he's inconsistent? He got zero targets week one. You're talking about what? Like practice? I was at, I was at training camp. He was good in, in training camp. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't get yeah. that. Okay, so here's the other thing, right? <laughs> we were told that you can't start Trey Lance based off of a preseason because that's not live bullets. That's not that's not for real. Are you going to bench IU based like, off a preseason? Exactly, what the hell exactly. are you talking about? 
Right. So what has Trent Sherfield done in this league before this offseason, this Dude, preseason? He had, he had five catches last year. He yeah. had one catch this year. Trent Sherfield's a good player. But to, to, to bury Brandon Ayuk and make him yeah. run clear out routes for an entire game seems um petty. It seems personal. I don't understand where it's coming from. I don't get I, it. I don't either. I don't either. And again, no, I have a Ayuk, theory. I have a theory right now. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I spent all off season with Trey Lance. Okay. Working out together. You know, a lot of players on this team are pretty vocal in their support of Jimmy Garoppolo. Maybe there's yeah. some people on this team who are pretty vocal in their in their disapproval of Jimmy Garoppolo starting. Maybe that's a problem right now. I'm just saying, I wonder, did I I don't know. But uh if Brandon Ayuk is team Trey Lance, is that working against him right now? I don't know. I guess what I'm not trying to get you to speculate here. I'm just it's the things that pop into my mind. <laughs> Your mind goes so many different ways, Grant. Yeah. And I can already see the comments after the show. You're so clickbaity. You're making up stories. Hey, but... you can't, in people watching, you can't act like it hasn't popped into your head too. Is this because Ayuk uh, isn't really into Jimmy Garoppolo? I mean, what we know, the most famous interaction between Jimmy and Trey uh, and Ayuk this year is the Chargers game. Mm -hmm. Interception. And it was a lot of finger pointing. Was it a bad throw? Was it a bad route? Did he sell out? Could he? Should he have caught it? I don't know. And then Jimmy Garoppolo comes out today and says, you know what I like about Tr Trent Sherfield is you can rely on him. He's always in the right place at the right time. He's always, you always know. So, so what are you saying about Brandon Ayuk? I don't know, man. Like, here's, here's what I'm saying. George Kittle pulled a Brian Bostic. Is that guy's name is Brian Bostic? Brian Bostic, yeah. Yeah. George Kittle almost lost the game because he couldn't – he was the guy on the hands team. He was supposed to be the special player out there, and he couldn't handle that that job. Debo Samuel almost lost the game because he didn't go down after getting a first down. But Ayuk's the one who's not a pro. Mm -hmm. Ayuk's the one who has to learn better habits. I, I don't get that. I To me, this is weird, and I feel like – I feel like Niner fans are starting to – lose a little bit of faith in Kyle Shanahan. I mean, they know him very well now. This is year five, and there are a lot of things to like about him. But one thing after another, now it's like, what? Ayuk isn't good enough for you? Ayuk isn't good enough for you. I mean, we got we, we were with you with Dante Pettis, man. We definitely yeah. saw that. Yeah. Ayuk? We all like Ayuk. What has he really done? We're, we're losing you, Kyle. You're losing us. Ayuk played really well as a rookie, Grant, really well. So we're talking about a proven track record. Brandon Bostic, there you go. Um, okay. You're talking about <laughs> you're talking about a proven record yeah. in the regular season. Sherfield again, had four or five catches coming into this season. So, I mean, who's proven more? The other thing, too, to kind of go with your theory, I don't fully buy into it, but I will add to it just, you know, to, to I don't fully buy bit. into it. I'm just but, wondering. But, but. Who did Shanahan blame that that interception on? He said it was fully on Ayuk. Yes. That's I, what I'm saying. I've seen it That's a thousand times over, Grant. That was not on Ayuk. It's there was not. not. If but that Jim, was on Ayuk. Kyle blamed him. Jimmy blamed him. Right. Everyone has to go down for Jimmy. Everyone's yep. propping up Jimmy. Man, <laughs> oh, if they lose this week, it's, it's going to get crazy. It's if that one was crazy. on Ayuk, then Trey Lance's that he threw to Sanu was completely on Sanu. It was the same exact situation. Here's the thing, Jesse. We need to move on to the next topic in a minute, but they won this week, so there's no problem. Winning's so, the best deodorant, right? But they're musty right now. This team is musty. And if they lose, this team could split quick. That Kyle has created a very bad situation. And it's not it's all beneath the surface. And we've gotten little glimpses of it. But if they start losing, you're going to see certain people blame Jimmy. And you're going to see a lot of people defend Jimmy. And this is going to get messy. Now, they could start the season 7-0 and or whatever, and it won't come to that. But that's it's like right beneath the surface. I feel like we all can sense it. It's right there. Had they lost, it would have been out there right now. Of course, they weren't going to lose to the Lions. It would have taken a miracle. But this Eagles team is way better than, than Detroit. Much better. So they, they yes. better, the Niners better not... I mean, the fumbles, they, they better play a whole lot better. They better figure out their run defense.